is Italy heading out of lockdown and will travelers finally be able to come back to Italy? Let's talk about that. Hello there, I am Rafael Di Furia, back at it again for another Friday night. Thank you all for joining me again. This week, I wanted to talk about what things are looking like in Italy because this week there has been some talk about what things may be looking like going forward here in Italy. We haven't heard many updates in a little while now, and that's why I haven't made any of these videos about what's going on here in Italy in a little while. But since we have these new updates, and because I've been getting more and more questions about what's happening here, I thought this would be the right Friday night to do another one of these videos. But before we get too much deeper into this video, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, living life abroad, and updates from Italy, be sure that you are subscribing with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be very greatly appreciated. And of course, a huge, huge, huge thank you to those of you who helped to make content like this possible through Patreon and help this project to be able to continue. And also a huge thank you to those of you who've bought the shirts, the posters, the mugs, and the cell phone cases, all the different little stocking stuffers that you can find on rafaeldefudia.com slash NYAG gear because those also go to help make this type of content possible. So thank you all so much. And just before we get into the rest of the video, I know there are going to be many of you who are interested in hearing about flying to Italy and if that's possible and how that could be possible, but that's something I'm going to leave for later in the video because I wanna talk about some of the more important major stuff that's happening here before that. And if you see me looking off camera, that means I'm just looking at some notes that I have here. Uh, the first major point that I would like to talk about is from uh, Regional Affairs Minister Francesco Boccia. Boccia? Boccia? Anyway, <laughs> Italy's Regional Affairs Minister recently said during a talk that he gave online that in the middle of the month that all or the majority of the nation will be yellow. And they are considering precise restrictions for the holiday that don't allow us to relax our behaviors, as he put it. And when that statement was made, the new rules that we're going to be talking about in just a second here hadn't been put out yet, but they had been talked about, they just hadn't been put out officially yet. But even though this information was still put out before, I did think it would be important to talk about this just quickly first, just because there is some relevance. So even though things in the country and the situation here could be looking better and a lot of the country may be out of their red zones, it sounds like there is very much an interest to keep some of the restrictions that are existing right now and to not loosen anything up. And even if loosening up anything, it would just be minimally. And they are looking at restrictions even though under the classification of a yellow zone, there is a lot more freedom in comparison with orange and red zones. And in Italy's three-tier color system of yellow, orange, and red, yellow is the lowest tier that you find on that list where you still do have cause for concern, but there are a lot of strong recommendations as we've been hearing about. And some rules, many rules, but a lot of strong recommendations. But it looks as though some of the recommendations may turn into actual rules and not just strong recommendations anymore. But moving on to yesterday, December 3rd, the day that I am recording this video, the day that Giuseppe Conte also gave his talk about the new DPCM, which will govern how we move forward, at least for the next little while. And in his talk, he said, in a free and democratic system, we cannot enter the homes of citizens with stringent restrictions, but only strong recommendations. Do not receive cohabitating people at home, especially those especially on these occasions, and uh, talking about Christmas, New Year's, the holidays. Um, during Christmas and New Year's, caution is essential to protect our loved ones, and especially the elderly. And I do have to say that that statement is actually interesting because not too long ago, he did say that the elderly aren't essential, which sent a lot of the country into a big uproar. And I might add, just since that slip up, what I've been noticing personally is that it seems as though he's maybe been a little bit more careful about what he said and how he said it. And so that's just one thing, just as a side note, that I've noticed personally that 
I find interesting. Even though they aren't restricting people to visit each other's homes technically, at least in yellow zones, they are going to be restricting travel from the 21st of December through the 6th of January. Although there was something that was mentioned in there about these travel restrictions that I'm sure will add a little bit of confusion as it's it's not contradictory, but it gives a loophole to what they're talking about here. What Conte said is that in any case, it will always be possible to return to the municipality where one has residence domicile or where one's home is. This will allow couples who are distant and distant um, for work reasons to be reunited, uh, but who live together periodically and to be together for the holidays. So it seems as though that even though traveling isn't allowed during this time, that returning to your home would be, even though Traveling is an essential part of returning. Again, this is one of these things that I've talked about a number of times that some people do find a little bit confusing. This seems to be a lot more straightforward than some of the other things that we have seen in the past, but at the same time, it does seem to add a little something in there that I think people will be using maybe in a way that it wasn't intended for. But going back to what the regional affairs minister said on January the 7th, the country will restart with a major vaccination campaign. However, this does seem to be in contrast to something that the Italian minister of health said, that the vaccine would not be mandatory. So I'm curious to see how this, this vaccination, uh, major vaccination campaign might look. But in the build up to January 7th, from the 4th of December until the 6th of January, stores that are not in red zones, even though there has been talk about Italy, most of Italy should be yellow by that point. If there, uh, unless a store is in a red zone, they will be allowed to stay open until 9 p.m. However, in that many places, that won't change much since many stores don't stay open past 8 or 8.30, especially in smaller towns. So I don't know. For me, it kind of feels like that one parent who's trying to be cool for their kid and their kid's friends saying, hey, let's go do this cool thing, but it ends up not really being that cool and horribly failing miserably in that attempt to gain some favor. But uh, the curfews will remain in place like we've already been seeing them. And even on Christmas Eve, from 10 at night until five in the morning. However, on New Year's Eve, we will also still see the curfew in place, but it will go from, instead of 10 till five, it'll go from 10 until seven. But then going back to what Conte was saying on the third, he ended up talking about what's being called the Italy cashless plan. And elements of this is something that have been circulating in the news for a little while now that there will be these discounts and reimbursements that if you shop online or with a credit card, that you'll get a reimbursement from the government. And now they're actually putting this plan into effect. And for shoppers who shop until the 31st of December, who pay through a card or applications, they can get a reimbursement of 10% up to 150 euros total. And this can be done through an app that the government has put out called IO, which is supposed to be available on the major pl app platforms that you can find. And actually, at the time of recording this, I just happened to check this a few minutes ago, just before starting to record this video. Uh, on the Italian Apple App Store, it has it's the number one lifestyle app currently and has a very solid two and a half out of five star ratings out of 852 ratings with a significant portion of those ratings seeming to be one star. But then moving on to the subject that I know a lot of you will be very interested in, and that's actually traveling to Italy and being able to get to Italy. I get a ton of messages about people who are wanting to come to Italy in general, but this year especially, I've been getting messages left and right from people asking me, when do I think it'll be possible, if I think it'll be possible, and so on. And really, I always have to say that for the best information that I can help you with, watch these videos about what's happening in Italy. It's, it's always in the title of the video. and these update videos are the best information, the most up-to-date information that I'm able to put out because anything else about saying when I think it's possible or how I think it could be possible to travel to Italy would be really just pure guesses. And so anyway, this is a subject that I will try to only touch on briefly because there is not a lot of information that's really out there. It's pretty straightforward, but 
it's not, it doesn't go into so much depth. But anyway, Alitalia and Delta are going to be running experimental flights between the US and Italy that would be quarantine free. This means that you just, you get on the flight, you arrive in Italy, no quarantine. But of course, there's a catch to that. Maybe not a catch, but you do have to go through some testing. I'll talk about that in just a quick second. But um, this is something that really only hit the news in Italy and internationally just very recently within the past week or so. And that this test period actually started the 16th of December and is going to go until the 31st of January of 2021. And for the time being, most people actually still cannot get into Italy or the, the Schengen zone who are from outside of the Schengen zone unless they have a proper reason to. And among these people who can enter the country, a 14 day quarantine period is still mandatory. But to be able to get onto one of these experimental flights, you'll need to present a medical certificate with a negative molecular or antigen test result that had been carried out within the last 72 hours before boarding, or you can undergo free rapid antigen testing at the airport in Rome or Milan, and you can get on the flight if you've received a negative result. It looks like they're trying to create a corridor between the United States and Italy, which may extend from Italy to Germany. But even though for many people, this is something that is very exciting and that they're very happy to see, this is also coming under a bit of criticism from people. I've been hearing people that have the question, well, if the test has to be done within 72 hours of the flight, couldn't that theoretically mean that maybe a person could contract the virus after they get the test and before they get onto the flight? And so is that 72 hour window really even a good idea or realistic? This is not my question. This is just a question that I have been hearing from people. But even going back to what Conte said on the third, that Italians who go abroad for tourism from the 21st to the 6th of January upon their return will need to go into a two week quarantine. So this is something that seems to be kind of trying to dissuade people from taking those holiday trips abroad. But I would assume that the people who can get onto these experimental routes might not be under the same rules since they would be able to enter the country without the quarantine period. But anyway, this is something that is a very small amount of people who can even really take advantage of this at this point, seemingly. And the people who can take advantage of this seem to only be people who do have a legitimate reason for being in Italy, whether it is because of their residence, they are returning home for business or for health emergencies, kind of the general uh, sort of guidelines that we've been seeing for a while here in Italy anyway, for travel between regions. And I've also been seeing a mixture of people from around the country who have a couple of different opinions about how things should be going here in Italy. There are some people who have the opinion that Italy should be completely closed off and shut down and not allowing anybody from anywhere to come into Italy so that we can try to get through this. And then on the other side, you have people who are of the opinion that Italy needs to open up as much as possible because of the economic ramifications and not just for tourism, but for various different reasons. And even locally to try to open things up more than they have been. Like I've said before, this part of the year has been a lot less restrictive than what we saw earlier this year. Maybe I don't know if I said that on this channel or on the Italian Citizenship Podcast that I'm on. But anyway, if I haven't said it on this channel before, I'm saying it now that what we are seeing now is definitely not the same as what we saw earlier this year where everything was completely closed and very eerie. Now things are a little bit less eerie, but you still do have the option to go to some stores depending on the region where you live and whether you're in yellow orange or red. Where I live has been able to stay in yellow. However, it's been a very restricted yellow because even though you do have the national level laws, the regions can choose to make more strict rules if they want. They can't make rules at a lower standard than the rest of the country, but they can choose to do more so. And so here in my region, they have chosen to make some extra restrictions beyond just the yellow zone restrictions. It's almost kind of like a 
orange light, so to speak, a diet orange. And it seemed to have saved us in this region from some of the more harsh restrictions that you see in the orange and red zones. And it seems as though the government is having this plan of trying to get the country back up and running around the 7th of January. Even they're talking about opening up high schools again and allowing in-person learning, which is something that a lot of students around the country have been really complaining about and even there have been a number of protests around the country by students sitting in front of their schools like even on the steps of their schools with their laptops doing their distance learning at school in protest of the current situation so it does seem as though there is a planned return to something that resembles normal but that normal that we are waiting for seems to be a few steps ahead of where anybody can really plan for at this moment in time, unfortunately. But anyway, thank you all so much for joining me on another Friday night. And thank you to those of you who've been supporting this channel. And especially because of those of you who are helping through Patreon, it is because of you I am able to continue with this project to try and offer what information I can in regards to moving abroad and to bring these updates about what is happening here in Italy because I know there is a lack of this information and some of you are wanting to hear it from the perspective of somebody who lives in Italy and that's where I am. And what I try to do is take all of the information that I can find from multiple sources and put it into one place so that it's easier to sift through because sometimes looking at all of these various news sources, and not just news sources, but even if you go to the original source, like the government papers, which I also go to and check out, it can be confusing to try and sift through it. And so you allow me to take that time to do this. So thank you very much. And of course, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship and living life abroad and updates from Italy, be sure that you are subscribed with the notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be very greatly appreciated. Again, thank you so much to those of you who helped to make these videos possible through Patreon. And also a huge thank you to those of you who have bought the the posters, the shirts, the cell phone cases, all the different little stocking stuffers through rafaeldefuria.com slash NYAG gear. It is very much appreciated. And if I'm not mistaken, there is still enough time before the holidays to get shipping and get your item to whoever you're giving your gift to, or maybe for yourself. <laughs> anyway, as always, I am Rafael Furia, and I will see you all next time. Later. Thank you.